The British Museum in London is just a wonderful place, and there are some awe-inspiring displays. For example, you can see Da Vinci's original notebooks, or the first edition of Shakespeare's compiled plays. That goes back to 1623. And there's also a Byzantine manuscript dating back to 1220 with some amazing illustrations, but the problem is that the white areas of these illustrations have turned black, and that includes the flesh-colored parts, because in those days the flesh color was arrived at by mixing white and uh, red paints. So what is going on here? The white was uh, a pigment called lead carbonate. And this is something that had been known since antiquity. It is made by taking metallic lead, soaking it in vinegar to make uh, lead acetate, and then exposing that to carbon dioxide from some kind of vegetable fermentation. And that forms lead carbonate. And lead carbonate is a pigment used in white paints. Now, the problem was that during the Victorian era, the British Museum was gaslit, which meant uh, burning of uh, a fuel that was generated by combustion of coal. And that's a mixture of hydrogen, methane, carbon monoxide, but coal gas, as it was called, was contaminated with small amounts of hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide reacts with lead compounds to form lead sulfide, and lead sulfide is black. That was the problem. Well, hydrogen sulfide reacts with uh, other metals too, like with iron. And here we have the classic problem of the gray coloring around the yolk of eggs that have been cooked for a very long time, or if the egg isn't fresh. Well, what happens here is that with heat, the proteins found in the white of the egg begin to break down, and they release an amino acid called cysteine, and that decomposes to yield hydrogen sulfide gas, and because of the heat, it is pushed inwards towards the cooler yolk. And the yolk contains some iron ions, and these react with the hydrogen sulfide to form iron sulfide. That's the gray that you see around the, the yolk. It's uh, perfectly safe to eat. The amount of hydrogen sulfide that is released is, is uh, inconsequential in this case, although hydrogen sulfide itself is highly toxic. In fact, it is as toxic as hydrogen cyanide. And there are, unfortunately, many cases of people having been accidentally poisoned by hydrogen sulfide, which is released in sewers, known as sewer gas. It can be uh, released from lagoons where pig manure is, uh, is stored. So there have been unfortunate accidents, occupational hazard, workers who, who are uh, exposed to hydrogen uh, sulfide. Interestingly enough, though, recently it has been discovered that hydrogen sulfide also forms in small amounts in the human body as a result of metabolism of proteins. And the hydrogen sulfide can have some uh, beneficial effects. It can actually have an effect against uh, oxidative stress. It can act as an antioxidant. And uh, there are already researchers who are interested in trying to find drugs that will release just tiny amounts of hydrogen sulfide in order to have some kind of a therapeutic uh, effect. So far, none of that has come to fruition, but we will wait and see. So what we have here is another example of a chemical like hydrogen sulfide, which can be detrimental or beneficial depending on the extent of exposure. And that today is our cup of joe.